Well, hello and welcome to Tea with the Druid, number 302. It's uh, lovely that you're here. Uh, and now we're all equal. They, there used to be two groups of people. There were the people who would see it live and then there were the people who would watch the recording. But now, even if you're watching it live, it's not really live. So you're watching the recording too. So the distinction between whether you're watching it recording or live no longer exists and we're all on a par. And that is because I am, uh, where am I in, in two weeks' time? I'm, I, I, I'm driving to Essex and I'm otherwise engaged. So I can't uh, be, be doing Tea with the Druid. So I am now in Mallorca and um, I'm speaking with my good friend, Youth, uh, who is in London, in Clapham, uh, surrounded by his books and uh, his music and uh, his wonderful house that is like it's like a kind of um, artwork happening museum kind of place anyway those of you who've listened to on my website I've got a number of, of different meditations and then at the bottom there's one where I say strap yourself in and hold tight because here's an unusual one that we we, we did that youth and I recorded that I put that together um, up in the attic studio of his house in Clapham. So, it's lovely to see you, lovely to welcome you. Hi, Philip, lovely to see you. Yeah, yeah great to be with yeah. you. And um, whilst I've been relaxing in New York somewhat and writing yeah. away as well, youth, you've been terribly busy, haven't you? And you've just done something amazing. Tell us about it. I have. I've been uh, I've been blessed with a busy year from the beginning of the year. Um, I've just been recording in Spain and Andalusia, and my recording studio uh, near Granada with uh, the indie band uh, Razorlight, and that was an intense, you know, ten day session, uh, long hours and a lot of challenges, but very ecstatic and uh rewarding and satisfying as well and then i had to let, let me just tell, sorry to interrupt you but i'll just tell you my kids this evening when we were having uh, supper they said oh you've been uh you've been producing uh, an album with razor light and i i said i don't know who they are never heard of them uh, <laughs> and they <laughs> i showed my age obviously uh, <laughs> Yeah, but it also illustrates your kids' good taste, which they've obviously inherited from you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so at the end of that session, I quick-footed it back to London, to West London, to do a show to launch an album I've done called Iron Horse, which is a musical interpretation of uh, a, a fairly obscure but classic Allen Ginsberg poem from 1965. And the album is by youth featuring Allen Ginsberg. And this was a, a happening, which is a, a kind of reference to the 60s counterculture, especially that happened in that area of Power Square and, and where the tabernacle is off Portobello Road. And, and it was honouring the... Um, the prime movers of that and the legacy of that, particularly Ginsburg, but it also applies to um, John Hopkins and, of course, um, sadly, uh, John Sinclair, who was the manager of the MC5 and a big prime mover of the 60s counterculture in, in Detroit in the 60s, as well as being a beat poet himself. Um, and he died this morning, very early in the early, mm -hmm. early hours. I just spent a, a good part of the day writing a, a lovely elegy to, to him, for him. Um, I worked with him about 10 years ago, um, and it was very illuminating and inspiring, as have has been working with the Ginsberg, although Ginsberg's been dead since the 90s, but Ginsberg is a huge influence to me also. I mean, when I worked with Paul McCartney on the Feynman trilogy, uh, Ginsberg was a constant reference that Paul would be bringing up. Um, and, and, and I remember and, on that, on that, on, sorry, um, on that, uh, when you worked with Paul McCartney, I seem to remember you telling a story about how at some point in order to generate some uh, inspiration um, for for some lyrics, you tried the Ginsberg technique of cutting up words and throwing them up in the air and yeah. seeing what landed. Yeah, Ginsberg Burroughs technique of cut-ups, yeah. 
which many artists have used famously Bowie and uh but I think it uh, if you're a songwriter or even a poet actually um or any kind of writer sometimes using augury which we druids use a lot of mm. can unblock a a, a stuck blockage that's been going mm. on and uh I think the cut ups are very good and even what's encouraging is that even absolutely genius artists like McCartney, they have periods where they have writer's block as well, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think one way of getting around that um, and, the, and the creative process in general is to sort of turn it into a game and be a kid again and, and have fun. And the mm -hmm. cut-up technique is very simple, is you bring in a load of source books, poetry or any kind of literature, you glance at them, any word that jumps off the page to so you write it down on a piece of paper or a phrase or anything, um, you cut those up, put them in the hat, stir it up as a cauldron, throw it up in the air, see where they land, and you'll get weird juxtapositions of words and, and things you wouldn't consciously do. It's a way, like most augury is, I, I, I sense, of your subconscious speaking through the cards or the the runes or, or whatever it is you choose. Mm. Um, and, and things very quickly happen with, with McCartney. It was like... He go, oh, that looks good. And Electric Arguments, that was a that was a Ginsburg reference and the title of the third album. It put three or four things together, and then he'd start writing. It would it would spark and seed an idea. And once the wheels were turning, he'd have the finished lyric in like half an hour. So right. I mean, I, I I just work with many artists, and I re I really recommend it. Um, and it was great fun to do. Uh, recently, I worked with a an artist and he was looking for a name for his project and we did the cut up and he came up with forgotten pharaohs as a as a band title which we all loved great that's a lovely title forgotten yeah. pharaohs yeah yeah Brilliant. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, so uh, and then before that i did a another ginsburg piece where i recited iron mm -hmm. horse myself over some harmonian drones um tapped into his Ginsburg was very um, obsessed with Blake and and m many of the great artists, Dylan Thomas and um, you know, and but particularly Blake and and that idea of channeling and tapping in the the idea of psychogeography of tapping into the place mm. and the spirit of the place and the place talking through you in a in a, in a semi conscious way, um, and we did it at this place called the Horse Hospital just off Russell Square, which was an old horse hospital. Again, it was sold out. I think there's something in the air with counterculture at the moment, and and a general, you know, um, a general interest across all ages for things that are all things counterculture because normally poetry and these sort of counterculture events so niche and tiny they only attract a very few people but on these last two occasions we've sold the shows out and the queues around the block and people are very very keen for it i think it's a little ray of sunshine um it, within the dark dystopian doomer days we're in well know. well that's, that's what i wonder is the, is that one of the the the, the, the upsides a few upsides of 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 the awful mess and dark times that we're in is that it stimulates creativity and and an interest in alternative and countercultural approaches yeah because the because the mainstream culture is so obviously um aberrant and problematic yes yes yeah. Yeah. And I think with counterculture some people are confused as to what counterculture actually is but of course it's it's many things going across millennia, you know, um, and of course the the druids are, 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 are a countercultural cult of of sorts. Mm. Cult, the word comes from the word culture. Counterculture mm. is always on the fringes of society, but always gets absorbed by the centre of society, like a robot eating its tail. Um, and and the drift, you know, this this phenomenon of the drift from the edge to the centre, you know. So you'll get you'll get something like Jamie Reed, who uh, you yeah. know sadly died last year, but whose book is coming yeah. out in a month's time. You know, yeah. well, June actually is in yeah. June, the Eightfold yeah. Wheel of the Year, beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, he started off right on the edges, uh, yeah. being a very outrageous countercultural figure. Yeah. And he ended yeah. up, you know, with his pictures in the Tate. Yes, um, yes, and, yes. And, and, and now yes. this, I don't know if you're, yes. if you're aware of this interesting phenomenon that Lush is reproducing 
images of his in soap to yeah. go with the Druid festivals. Well, so, yeah, I mean, Simon Emerson and other Druid artists, musicians, yeah, late the late Simon, of course, was a, an ambassador for the Lush brand. That's and, right. Yeah, and um, yeah, uh, so yeah, I think that's great, and yeah. because you know, I. I, I, I sense, especially with my kids' generation, their mid twenties, the what my son calls the Doomer generation. You know, because mm. they they've grown up with the internet and they 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 see very little light and hope in the future as the world as it is, mm. and uh, and for them, I I think you, that they have to remember that um, counterculture is always there. They feel like. The, our generation, the boomer generation, have, have failed them in a way and created mm. this mess. I have to remind them that it's actually the counterculture that has allowed us to retain the freedoms we have. It was counterculture that brought down the Vietnam War. It was counterculture that brought down the Berlin Wall. It's counterculture that will bring an end to the Ukraine and Palestinian conflicts we see at the moment because it's essentially people power and we have to believe in that and have faith in that and people like Ginsburg, John Lennon, John John Sinclair, these guys actually went to jail for their beliefs in the 60s to ensure that we have the freedoms we have now whether it's smoking pot and which is now legal in America or using it medicinally or um, you know being able to have the right to protest you know. Yeah, yeah. Let let me let me ask you a question there because because it's almost like I I, I hate to, to to burst the bubble, but I love what you're saying. But when you say it's the counterculture that will solve the problem in Ukraine and Gaza, say more about that. What you what you mean by that? Because it's very hard to see how it can do that. Well, in the same way that counterculture brought an end to the Vietnam War by the sheer numbers of people who joined in the resistance to it, which yeah. was led and informed and, you know, there was the, and, and the counterculture was the catalyst and the, the, the a f a facilitator of that, as it will be in the future, as it always has been since Dionysian times um, mm. through to Paris in the 40s with the Bohemians. And it's always there. Sometimes it does fall down, but it always picks itself up quickly. It's always mm. there. And it, you know, in a, in a cyclical way, it's it's due a renaissance. I mean, I mean, actually, that I was thinking yesterday that, you know, the renaissance of Druidry uh, in mm. the late sixties when you first joined the mm. order um, mm. uh, was in part due to the 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 sort of uh, summer of love opening up. Um, and the counterculture of the times opening up, the delegislation of banned books, which mm. allowed uh, people to explore um, their spirituality and rediscover it in many ways. Mm. Um, uh, and, you know, that's, that's just like, like with counterculture, I, I sense, you know, pagan and alternative ways uh, of expressing your spirituality are just getting bigger and bigger now. Um, and, and I suppose one, one way to look at it is like a kind of yeast or leaven in, in, in the, that it provides the, the sort of seeding for something bigger, you know, uh, you know, that that's going on as well, isn't it? Yes. Yes, uh, absolutely. You know, yeah. um, there's a great quote from the Ginsburg poem, uh, Iron Horse, where he goes, uh, we are we are leaves on a tree. We're just drops of water heading for the sea, you know. And I think um, you know poetry, art, uh, music has always spoke louder. I think to everyday people than politics, mm. which is why counterculture can be more powerful than politicians in many ways. Which is why mm. it can achieve such huge things like stopping the Vietnam War, because. Mm. It goes past the bombast and propaganda and fake news of it to a central emotional core of our humane and humanness. And that's what we need more than ever in this crazy world we find ourselves in today. And we also need to teach our kids how to honour the ancestors in that way. And, and those that have made those sacrifices 
uh, and and that there is hope and there is a flame um of potential um beyond uh the nihilism and and cynicism we see today you know yeah because you you were talking about your 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 kids who identify with the doomer generation uh who's who's uh whose futures have been marred by the boomer generation. Um, but what I hear you saying is that you're <clears throat> you're asking them to nuance the situation a bit and to realise that actually we, as it were, in the boomer generation, were the people who were working for the really interesting stuff that they are benefiting from and are, and are in, enjoying and not for the kind of establishment grinding machine that... that, yeah. that has really been responsible yeah. for the kind of yeah yeah I mean on a simple level I I I I I I mentioned a quote of John Sinclair's a famous one where he said you're either you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem and mm. I said look the problem is the industrial military complex Moloch in yeah. Yeah. terms um, yeah. the 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 energy that turns humans into machines yeah um, uh, uh, and you know, if you're on the, um, you know, if you if you're on the uh, the side of creativity, love, peace, uh, you know, sharing that, but also raising your fist in the air for resistance to to the mm. machine, then mm. then you're on the on the side of, of finding solutions. You know, and mm. it is a, he said, oh, it's like the Matrix. You've got to take one of the pills. You know, yeah. and it's a, it is a little binary, but. I think on a simple level, anyone that's being creative that has um, some faith and hope towards a better future is on the side of the line. I mean, mm. again, with Druids, we we don't tend to like binarize it too much because we understand that without light, you, you, you wouldn't have darkness, without darkness, you wouldn't have light, and you have to find the equilibrium between the two. Um, mm. uh, but nevertheless, you know, we're in a very dark and... Uh, doom laden dystopian world at the moment the, the light needs to be uh, brought back you know um, mm. Mm. and encouraged and promoted you know yeah yeah no exactly and in you in this big event that you uh you put on last weekend uh the burrows one what did you what did you do what happened in the event Okay, I said it was so wonderful. It was uh, a really multicultural, uh, you know, um, totally age inclusive, gender. Everything was very inclusive. So we had mm. Indian tabla players, uh, uh, world musicians from all around the world playing their their own work and jamming with other musicians. Um, we had uh, folk musicians, Marshmello, who played with Dob. Bob Dylan on the on Cafe Wire in the sixties, original sixties countercultural heads. Um, then I had then we brought it up today with some with some DJ. I had Alex Patterson from the Orb doing this ambient set with little elements of Ginsberg spun in, and then I started my main performance, which was with an ensemble of about eight to ten musicians, a couple of sax players, a bit like Sun Ra or Alice Coltrane, this sort of devotional ecstatic music. Nothing mm. was rehearsed, nothing was uh, pre-prepared. I, I did have some drones. I had a harmonium in honour to Alan. I've done, I've had mm. one of those for years. And and I had this dancer, this incredible dancer, Zyda Balestros from Malaga, who's a contemporary dancer who who performed on the stage while we while we played uh, and, and she did this incredible sort of countercultural performance, really confrontational, going into the crowd, dancing up the walls, the balconies. Amazing. Raja Ram from Quintessence, Quintessence and uh, Tip Records and Spongel. Very honoured to have him. He's in his 80s to play some flute. And then the second half of the show, I had all these writers and um, artists come on and read the Iron Horse poem uh, mm. in succession as the band improvised around them and built up to a crescendo. And that included uh, feminist post-punk icon Gina Birch, um, uh, celebrated designer uh, Pam Hogg, um, Simon Fisher-Turner, um, Durga Broom from my old band Blue Pearl, Dancing Naked in the Rain, um, 
uh, so many others. I can't, I can't remember them all, but yeah, it was yeah. it was absolutely it was we, usually with that amount of people without any preparation, it can descend into chaotic um, mush. But actually, mm. it just flowed mm. really smoothly and mm. without effort and. We had uh, Ru Ashika, Anglo Indian, did an Indian blessing at the beginning. So there were some spiritual elements because Ginsburg would often recite Buddhist prayers and, and mantras. Mm -hmm. um, and we had the Hare Krishnas uh, right. performing, and uh, they were one of the beneficiaries for the charitable aspects of it. I've worked with them for a number of years, and they give out 4,000 hot meals a day in North London alone. I mean, they mm -hmm. really put their uh walk their talk in many respects and and, and mm. ginsburg of course was uh, a very very much into them as well as the uh the buddhist tibetan buddhist tradition so uh mm. and then and then we went over to a, a bar on the portobello road and had an after party there mm. with mix master morris toby anderson djing into the wee hours it was so joyous and celebratory um mm. and it really was a much needed pulling together of the tribes hmm. um you know when i uh look at what happened with the sum of the love it was the art slabs that organized a lot of the preci precipitating events that led up to that most of and, and you know the the big one was the poetry olympics at the albert hall in 65 which was Again, Ginsburg was a big part of that. But that is the one event that most of those uh, intellectuals and academics cite as the, the prime catalyst tipping point for that summer of love, where all those different tribes and people came together and realised there was a single movement. That same thing happened at a B-in in San Francisco in 65. And... Uh, and and that that came from the arts lab. So you know, I started an arts lab about six seven years ago, South London arts lab. So this event was actually an arts lab event, and mm. we brought in other arts labs and other people, um, and we're just trying to copy them basically. And and mm. that, that what they did was so powerful, and it seems so mysterious. But mm. I think with the right intentions and uh, and a, and a, and someone to help organise people. It could happen again, and it needs to happen again. And actually, yeah. if you look at East London, um, hipster lifestyle, it's a whole nother planet out there. There's so many, there's like five bands playing in every other bar as you walk down the street. I mean, there's poets mm -hmm. reading poetry on the street. There's so much counterculture there that very, you, you won't, we only get, see a little bit in our media, but it is there, of course. Uh, what I love about that is the sort of centrality of art and poetry to life that that conveys, which of course is in Druidry too, you know, the I said for the, 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 the entertainment, yeah. the art, the, the poetry yeah. is right, right there in the middle of the ceremony. Yeah. It's part of the magic. I, and, and I suppose, you know, you can distill it all down in one way, whether mm. it's art, poetry, music, it's all storytelling. Mm. And the mm. reason why the stories are so important to us is because without our stories, ancestral and recent, we are mm. nothing. We are just flotsam in the wind. It's the stories yeah. that anchor us to who we are mm. and our mm. and our human identity. So they're very important, yeah. Yeah. And I think what, you know, one of the, the sort of themes that comes across in what you're talking about in the counterculture as well is is this allowing letting go of control is of allowing allowing the crazy the irrational uh allowing yourself to say things that you don't quite understand yourself that come to you that may that allowing yourself to maybe appear stupid or to to to, to do the wrong thing to to make the the, mu the music that doesn't sound good or the painting that looks awful, you know, but somehow allowing that and that yeah. frees you up tremendously. Yeah, think, it? yeah. it's the uh, in the tarot, it's the the fool, you yeah, know? and and which is the soul of stumbling yeah. along um, yeah. and falling into it, you know. Yeah. But we we do have the obligation and responsibility is to make the first step, and that can be mm. the the scariest part. But yes. I think, as we know, you know, 
once you've made that step, the road rises to meet you and always it comes through. That is a beautiful point for us to, to do a little meditation. That's lovely. If, if I can, if I can, let's just, let's just drop into this now. And if we drop into it in a way, in the most playful way, we've been talking about kind of ways of seeing the world and ways of being in the world that are, that are freeing and that allow you to be a little wild and a little crazy or wildly crazy, if you like. Um, and with meditation, we always, we often approach meditation as this very serious straight laced thing where we've got to, you know, breathe deeply and concentrate and all the rest of it. But there's something really to be said for uh, experimenting with meditation, allowing yourself lots of freedom just to dive in and just to, so what I'm going to suggest is if you want to, and of course you don't have to because you're, you're free, so you don't have to do this, but if you feel like doing it, just, just try softening your gaze or closing your eyes just to better, to better concentrate on yourself. And you'll, first of all, orient yourself and you, you find yourself sitting in front of your screen, the walls around you, ceiling above you, floor below you, here you are fully centered, fully present, here and now. Take in a slow deep breath. Oh, and then breathe it out fully and deeply, just relaxing into the moment. And as you relax into the moment, you allow your sense of the walls around you, ceiling above you and the floor beneath you to fade away. As you find yourself in a clearing in the forest. And this time, it's like, just, just hang on on the edge. Don't dive in straight away. Just, just find yourself, let yourself be on the edge of the clearing and just enjoy that moment of openness to what's going to happen next. And in your imagination, move your eyes down to your legs and feet. Now, you may see clearly, you know, the shoes that you're wearing or the, your bare feet. You may not see in meditations. You may just simply sense or imagine. Or you can pretend. You can pretend you can, you can see what you're seeing. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Because then just then get into a sense of the motion and imagine yourself like the fool just stepping forward knowing that as you step in, as you step forward you're stepping into a magical space you're stepping into a circle and there are other people who are coming forward too there's been this delicious moment of hesitation and then just everybody comes together and you just sense your hands moving out to either side of you you hold you catch the hands of the person on either side of you and you just imagine now that we're, we're dancing. You know, there's those wonderful circle dances that traditional dances where you're in a circle, you're holding hands and you're moving, you're swinging your hands backwards and forwards. And you're going a few steps one way, a few steps the other, some steps forward, some steps back. And you're just enjoying the motion and the movement. And see if you can allow your awareness just to relax into it so that the movement, you're not controlling it or thinking about it. The music is taking you and you're just allowing yourself to move. And there's this pleasant swaying kind of feeling in this. And the sense of camaraderie of being one tribe, one family, one group. And then at a certain moment you stop. Notice the feeling. Squeeze the hand to either side of you. Let go and allow yourself to just gently sit down right where you are. And just open to how you're feeling, kind of energy that's flowing through you.
it's like the movement has stirred something up in you and you can't maybe put your finger on it and you don't need to it's not not necessary at all to know what's going on it's just like there's a there's a shift and a change and that movement has kind of freed you up it's a fire burning in the center of the circle and it's crackling and you put your hands down to the ground place your palms on the ground and you can feel your love for the earth may this earth be blessed may there be may there be peace on this earth harmony on this earth and then you bring your hands up to your heart and you place your hands on your heart may my life be blessed May my creativity be flow freely from my heart and from my soul. And then with that, with your hands on your heart, you become, you start to become aware of your body. As you become aware of your body, your awareness of being in the sacred grove begins to fade. And you know you can return it at, at any time if you wish, when you go to sleep at night, for instance. But for the moment, you allow your awareness of the body to grow stronger as your awareness of the sacred grove and the tribe around you begins to gently fade. And you become aware of the walls around you, the floor beneath you, the ceiling above you, until you feel fully present here and now. You stretch your fingers and toes, and when you feel ready, you open your eyes. Mm. <laughs> so thank you so much, dear youth, for, for, for bringing your love and your energy and the colour and vivacity that you always convey. Uh, into into tea with a druid my and, pleasure uh, yeah can i uh, can i just plug my ginsburg album i've got a i've got a copy here a vinyl copy oh um, you can uh, you can get this on amazon or from cadiz music there's also a 300 page uh, illustrated book of the poem that i've done the illustrations for and a cd and there's also this, which is the Arts Lab newspaper, which is uh, features a, a page of writing about counterculture for me. You can get that from the um, South London Arts Lab via uh, um, uh, the Killing Joke picture book. I think Frank Jenkinson produced that. So um, that, that, that's only £2.50. That's definitely a collector's, future for, collector's edition. And, and if it's got the, the piece, the... the, the... Just so the, the viewers know, the, the one of the triggers for me emailing you and saying, hey, let's do a tea with the Druid, um, was you sent me what you'd written for that, I guess. Oh, that's the, right, yes. That's yeah, it, yeah. What, what, is, what is love? I think it's... it's yes, yes. What yeah. time is love? Yeah. What time yeah. is love? Yeah. yeah. And, and I read it. I thought, this is, I love this. This is fantastic. And I, yeah. I sent you some email and say, hey, let, you know, will you... So what, if, you, if you send me the, the, some links... Yeah. or a link for those for yeah. the for the album and all the rest of it um okay. we've got because it we're not it, this isn't going out for a fortnight um yeah. i can put those up on the show notes um right. that'd be lovely and yes right. to, and thank that, you yeah yes thank you philip that's been a pleasure as always lovely to see you lovely and, to uh, see you. enjoy your time amongst the ancient olive groves while you're there and uh yeah in, yeah just beautiful lovely I will do. I'll you stay there. I'll say goodbye. We'll say goodbye to everybody and and then we'll we'll chat. Okay, bye everybody and see you next week. Okay. <laughs>